All right, so this is the TR8 2013. Um, I like to call it 2014 now because it's got all the new changes since last war, which was last summer. Can't believe it's been uh, almost a year. So anyway, uh, what I wanted to go over in this video was all the different changes and uh, also just the new firing pin that uh, I developed. So let's get started here. Um, uh, where to start? Let's just start with uh, the changes to the turret. So before you could just pull the turret out the front and at the last war we found that it was a little bit too loose of a connection. My brother actually lost uh, lost the turret connection once. Um, but anyway, now you got this piece here which holds on to the turret much stronger. Now if you look at the turret um, the changes here, there's a lot of changes internally to this turret piece. Um, you can all look at that on instructables.com um, at my uh, TR8 2013. Um, we replaced the spacer on the back with this blue clip and the blue spacer. And the reason for that is when you take the turret out of the gun, you're not losing any spacers. Um, added this black clip up front. I'm not sure what Connects calls it, but I got it in a, a set. And um, the reason that's nice is now you can take this tan clip off the front when you go to replace this or van and you don't lose the spacers on there. So basically it's an extra layer of protection if so if your turret gets shot or something you're not losing pieces. Um, it's just nice. The cool thing with uh, the turret is you have these blue clips here. These all snap off just like that. Pins come out and you can do that to each pin so you can replace each pin. Um, and that's not, not really changed, but the main thing is is you have these tan clips here that save on blue pieces for you. And the reason that works is because I got green rods jammed in here. You can check all that out as well online. Um, so anyway, when you go to replace these pins, you can see it's as simple as just putting a new pin in, snapping it on, rotating it over like that. So that's the turret. Um, you got the new ratchet mech, which is a lot thicker. Um, let's go ahead and put the turret back on here. And then to put this piece back on, you're just going to sneak it in this little slot there and hide it up top, snap it on. And that connection is much stronger than it ever was, which is nice um, when you're out running around and stuff. Um, new ratchet mech, a lot thicker. Um, there's really no chance of it ever failing. There was a good ratchet before, but this uh, ratchet is just more foolproof. And with this blue clip on here, you turn the... Well, let's, let's show you this way. If you have two rounds loaded up, let's say you have round loaded here, you load up all the other rounds and round loaded here, and I just have the firing pin in there as an example. But if you rotate this all the way around once now, notice you kind of heard it's click in place. Every time that clip rotates past this yellow connector, it's going to make a snap. And what it lets you know is that this turret is wound completely um, once. So if you were to fire this round off, it's all the way loaded to the last round. So it's kind of a nice indicator so you don't overwind your turret, break or band, stuff like that. Um, so you have that. Um, you always have the foregrip, which you can replace uh, and remove. Um, quite simply, you just kind of take it off the bottom. I don't feel like doing it because it's kind of actually snapped on it pretty good. Um, the new trigger, go ahead and check out the new trigger online. Um, basically, people were having trouble at the last war over time. The trigger well, icons would kind of, I guess, bend in would be the best way to say it. New trigger prevents any problems um, whatsoever. Um, highly recommend that you do that mod if you have this gun. Um, slight changes to the back of the, uh, the stock, and that allows the slide to slide back further, so that way there's no... It has a little bit more give, I guess, between this point and back here, so you can fully charge the weapon without ever having trouble, um, no matter what. So, and then obviously the slide's new. Actually, the slide wasn't used at the war. Um, that was kind of made after the fact, and uh, highly recommend it. Um, very easy to use. I actually gave away one of these guns for Christmas to, I think they're like seven and nine year old kids, and um, they were able to use the weapon no problem. So, um, pretty cool. Um, Features since the war, and I thought it was kind of funny that they all came out right after I posted an instruction or an instructable on how to make this gun. So I just thought a video would.
explain all that better than me typing it all out. So a few other things is uh, I wanted to go over is the new firing pin. We'll, we'll go over that in a second. And um, the handle here. What's our time at? 5.18. Okay. All right, we'll go over it all right now. Okay, so for this part, you have the same slide that you use for both. Um, you can use this slide or the handle slide. And it all runs off the same system here, I guess you'd say. And what you do is you're just going to remove the one piece here. It's on there pretty good. Okay, so you just remove the snowflake and this uh, white rod. And uh, then from here, you're just going to add, if you notice the little empty it out areas, you're going to add these blue clips, which allows you to add your uh, handle. So we can actually add this snowflake on right now. And if you're, like, let's say you're left-handed and you want to operate it with your right hand, you can put it on that way. If you're going to be a right-handed shooter, you can put it on that side. And then quite simply, you're going to take that white rod that you just took off, snap it back on top, and then if you want some sort of aiming system, I always add this little block connector up top there to aim with the front. And so now you got a handle. Just depends on your preference and uh, you know just depends on what you like. So it shows that I didn't have to tear the whole part again or tear apart the whole gun to uh, add a handle or remove a handle. I could Either way, it's going to be uh, easy to, to, to modify. Um, so now let's go over the new firing pin. Um, I'll show you how this works here. So to remove the slide on this gun, you've got two blue clip connectors. Take a piece of ammunition or some sort of rod or whatever you have with you. Remove the two front blue clip connectors. That'll allow you to move this uh, this track piece, which is connected to the return band. From here, if you start sliding this back, that orange connector will pop forward, which basically means that this uh, one slot connector slid forward, uh, not a bad tight squeeze. So now, this can slide free. Notice you have your um, your firing pin back here, and everything else is good. Um, so yeah, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to take the bands off. So this is how you'd access your bands too. And remove the firing pin. So this is the firing pin. This is the new one I've been talking about. Um, if you notice, there's really not any wear and tear on this. It's been shot quite a few times. Um, but let me show you how this is built by just uh, taking it apart. So. Um, what you have is duct tape that I bought at Meyer. It comes at it's three fourth inch wide duct tape, and it's the outside layer. So you have one layer of duct tape. Then you have a layer of electrical tape. Another layer of duct tape. And normally there'd be another layer of e-tape. But the idea is you're going to alternate one layer at a time. This was your rubber band that was wound around there tightly. And the last layer you can see is two layers of electrical tape. That's actually on the firing pin connected to that, um, that black hinge piece. So what you have is this outside layer of duct tape. Then you have another layer of e-tape. One more layer of duct tape. One more layer of e-tape the rubber bands, and two layers of E-tape on the very uh, bottom layer. So it's still a very skinny firing pin, but uh, it's holding up better than any other firing pin I've ever ever made. So let me show you now. It's actually a little tricky with this slide to insert a new firing pin. But let me show you how that's done. So you're going to just take your firing pin, snap it onto the bottom guide rail, the one slot connector there. Add the one slot connector up top, and that's the one that's going to be connected to the 
to slide. Move your trigger out of the way. Okay. going to add your Arrands. So, I highly recommend you use at least three Arrands. Maybe, uh, so funny there, babe. Nothing. Alright, so we got two bands. We're going to put total five on here. Is this going to really want to say hi? He's going crazy. All right, one more band. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got five bands on here now. Just want to make sure they're lined up kind of in a nice orderly fashion so they don't get all tangled up or anything. Just snap the slide back on, slide the slide forward, use that piece of ammunition or rod or whatever you got. Push the blue rod all the way forward so now you can connect. Oh, made a mistake, hold up. I left the return pin band on the this side. that back forward, slide the pin back forward, that's on the slide, and put a return band back on. Okay. Snap on your one slot blue connectors, and you should be good. So. So that's how you would uh, replace a firing pin, make a firing pin, kind of goes over some of the specs of the gun, and uh, obviously you want to use the thin ammo that I designed for the gun, uh, it's probably the best ammunition type for it, and uh, that's it. I know it was a long video, hopefully explained everything though. And I just wanted to show off a few of the new features, including the firing pin and how to swap out your uh, your slides. So, thanks for watching.